All right, today we're going to cover uh, the new GNS3 version, I think 081, yep, 081, Virtual Box Edition, which is great. Um, it conf it uh, integrates great with Virtual Box, which is my virtualization of choice. So let's go ahead and add a router. Um, I did not add a base config.txt, but that's fine. And essentially, I think we covered this before, but I added one image, the 2691 image for uh, my Cisco router. That's the only one I have, I think. So after that, I went ahead and added VirtualBox Guest. And first, I had to set that up under Preferences. And under Preferences, there's a VirtualBox menu item. And I believe the VBox wrapper thing is all set. Working directory is all set for you. Pretty much, um, you have to go to the VirtualBox Guest. And in a VirtualBox guest, uh, for me at least, I, I added two of them, but it pulls up the identifier names already, and those are already machines in my VirtualBox, which is great. So Windows XP I chose, and then I hit save. Um, number of NICs, I just put one. That's really all. I believe if you add two or three, it'll add, um, like there's an option for four total, and I think I already had one, which was, uh, was connected via... Um, NAT, and then I believe this adds another VirtualBox NIC. So I added two. We're going to delete Windows 8. <clears throat> Don't need it. All right, so I have Windows XP 64 bit, and if you hit apply and OK, and then you drag on your VirtualBox guest. If I had more than one image, it would pop up with a pop up saying, Which one do you want to use? So after that, we're just going to throw in a switch there. and there we go, and now it's just going to be a simple matter of connecting them. So E0, pretty simple, to the switch, and then I'm connecting that router. And there we go, that's pretty simple. Now once we start this is when the magic happens, I'm starting my VBox 4. And it automatically boots my Oracle VM virtual box. Alright, and now it's done booting, and now you're wondering, well, is it connected? How does that work? Let's go to settings, and as you can see under network, there's now two adapters. There was only one NAT adapter that came that I worked on by default. This enable a network adapter. The generic driver UDP tunnel set all these settings for me, so I wasn't going to change any of that since I don't entirely understand what's going on there, so... Um, I've never really messed around with generic driver UDP tunnel. Uh, the destination, I would assume that's uh, connecting to Dynamips. So, anyway, that's great, but we'll notice, hey, let's go ahead and look at the network connections. Uh, one sec, there we go. And my local area connection, disabled. Um, I think I disabled that last time because I was messing around with this one. So you'll notice limited or no connectivity, which is understandable because the router's not on, so there's no connectivity. All right, so let's go ahead and start our router up and console into it. And as this baby starts up, and we're at the initial configuration, we're going to do no. And let's go get to the command prompt here. Do, 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 do. Uh, enable conf t, we're going to configuration, and then we're interface fa, oops, fa0 slash uh, 0, which should be, yes, fa0 zero, 0. I'm going to do ip add 192.168.1.1 one, and 255 to 255.0, pretty simple. Um, no shut, which pretty much turns that uh, I that FA00 on, and boom, there we go. Change state changed up. Shows that it's connecting. Everything's good. The only other thing we need to do is, um, and of course we can verify that with show IP interface brief, and up and up. The only thing we need to do now is set up DHCP to make sure that everything's connected. So we're going to go back to conf t, do 
service DHCP, IP DHCP pool. You can name this whatever you want. We're just going to do a very descriptive one, 1.2.168, 1.0 slash 24. Then we're going to do network 192.168.1.0. All the usuals, and the default router is going to be this one, which means one two to one six eight dot one to one, and the DNS server is going to be the same thing, and that should be it. We can exclude certain ranges if we only wanted. For example, um, IP DHCP excluded address. We're going to exclude 192.168.1.200 um, to 192.168.1.0 and, and that should exclude that from being an IP address that it gives out. Now uh, DHCP should all be set up so let's go ahead and test it. There's limited, we're just going to do a quick repair. It will renew the IP address, it should find the DHCP server, and we should get, there we go, boom, connected firewall. Let's go to run this, ping 192.168.1.1, and we have connectivity, people. That is so very, very easy and nice. I love it. So, I'm. hopefully we'll be doing a few more. I have one Cisco, big Cisco configuration plan for later. I might be doing that with a partner, in fact, a person I went to college with who actually did get a Cisco degree, whereas I got a Microsoft slash security degree. And then, of course, I now use Linux primarily, so it'll be fun. So, all right, hopefully uh, in the future we can get that uh, up and running for you, but that was just a quick um, how-to on how to get that up and running. It's very simple, very effective. I like it.